Hey there, Sarge here from 100 Games 100 Days. Today, we're gonna go over Genghis Khan of the Mongolian Empire in Civilization VI. We'll go through in-game examples to clearly demonstrate how their abilities work. I'll show you how you can get a whopping plus 24 diplomatic visibility combat modifier and how you can potentially move a unit from one end of the map to the other in one turn and much more. Before we begin, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this. So let's get into it. Mongolia's civilization ability is or 2. Starting a trade route immediately creates a trading post in the destination city. Receive an extra level of diplomatic visibility for possessing a trading post in any city of a civilization. All Mongolian units double the usual combat bonus for having a higher level of diplomatic visibility than their opponents. So what is a trading post? Normally, once a trade route has been completed to a city, a trading post will be established. Trade routes that pass through cities with trade routes get extra gold and extra range so you can reach cities further away over time. As Mongolia, the moment you start a trade route, you instantly establish a trading post in that city. So in this example, I have two traders on standby. A trade route on land can reach up to 15 tiles away. So I can't reach Mitla at this point in time. But if I send a trade route to Fez, which instantly creates a trading post, then my second trader can reach Mitla, as the trading post in Fez has now extended the range by passing through. So what is diplomatic visibility? In short, the more diplomatic visibility you have over other civilizations, the more information you will have access to, which you can find in the gossip section for each civ in the diplomatic screen. There are four access levels of diplomatic visibility. Limited, open, secret, and top secret. This also works from a military point of view. In this example, I've sent a trade route to London and I have access level two with English Eleanor. I'm getting one level for having an active trade route with England, and I'm getting a second level for Mongolia's or two ability for having a trading post established. If I was to declare war on Eleanor, we lose the trade route that we have established, but we keep Mongolia's or two ability, and we have one level of diplomatic visibility over England. So if we were to attack with our warrior, you can see that we're getting plus six for intel on opponent's movements. In this example, we are at war with England, and we are getting a whopping plus 24 combat strength for intel on opponent's movements. How are we doing this? Well, as Mongolia, we get double the amount of diplomatic visibility when in military combat than any other civilization. We have four levels of access over England. So we have the access of top secret. And we have done this by getting the printing technology. We have a spy in place with two promotions, which is making it a secret agent or better. And we have Mongolia's or two effect for sending the trade route and establishing a trading post like we did before. So just a normal muskman versus a, another normal muskman, but we're getting an extra 24 military strength is nearly killing it instantly. This also works on religious units. Mongolia's unique building is the Ordu. It replaces the stable and the only difference to the stable is that it gives plus one movement to heavy and light cavalry units trained in cities with an Ordu. It isn't cheaper production or maintenance wise. To quickly demonstrate the difference, I'm gonna buy a horseman in a city without an Ordu. It has a movement of four. In a city with the Ordu, we will buy a horseman. And you can see it has an extra plus one movement with five movement in total. Mongolia's leader ability for Genghis Khan is Mongol Horde. All cavalry class units gain plus three combat strength and a chance to capture defeated enemy cavalry units. There are two classes of cavalry units in Civilization VI. There's the heavy cavalry and the light cavalry. The heavy cavalry starts off with the heavy chariot, which upgrades into the knight, which upgrades into the cuirassier, which upgrades into the tank, which upgrades into the modern armor. The light cavalry units start with the horseman, upgrades to the courser, upgrades to the cavalry, and then upgrades to the helicopter. Welcome to the battleground. In this example, we have a modern armor attacking a heavy chariot. You can see at the bottom that we're getting plus three combat strength for Mongol horde. If we start attacking these heavy chariots, you can see that we've just captured one, captured another. The weaker the defended unit is, the more likely they are to be captured. 
In every single example here, our modern armor just absolutely annihilated the heavy chariots and we captured every single one of them. Also note, when you capture an enemy cavalry unit, they will get 25 health and have no movement left. Note that you cannot capture barbarian cavalry units. In this example, we have heavy chariots versus heavy chariots. Before we showed the modern armor getting every single heavy chariot. In this example, we won't get every single one of them. So I think in total there, we've got two or three. In this example, we've got knights versus chariots. In this example, I think we've got every single one except for one. Note that only your own cavalry units can capture enemy cavalry units. So we can't use our modern ATs here to capture these heavy chariots. In this example, I've switched sides and taken over Elena. My cavalry units kamikaze into Mongolia's cavalry units will not be captured. To capture units, you need to be on the offensive. Mongolia's unique unit is the Keshig. It comes in at stirrups and it's basically a crossbow with extra movement. It costs the same production as a crossbow. It has the same range strength and melee strength as a crossbow. It has the same maintenance. The only difference is that it costs 10 horses and it has an extra 2 movement. The Keshig is classed as a range unit, so it has the range promotion tree. It also has the special ability that it can escort moving civilian and support units at higher movement speed. Now that's a bit confusing. I'll put on the screen what civilian and support units are. And in this example, I'm going to escort this settler down to this tile. The way to do this is we move the settler first. You can move it down with no movement left. So this settler now has no movement left. The Keshik has full movement. I can move here and then chain the Keshik together and now my Keshik has three more movements so I can move two tiles so I'm going to move to this oasis tile unlink with one turn left and then essentially tag team with this Keshig, link them up and move two tiles so the Keshig has one move left now unlink tag team link them together and then move here I can't settle the city straight away, but that's one turn I've been able to move my settler from our city over here, which I'm not going to try to pronunciate, down next to this Patiti natural wonder. No, because the Keshig is classed as a range unit, it does not get the plus three combat strength for Mongol Horde. As you can see here, the horse is getting the plus three combat strength, but the Keshig does not. Note that you can't take a city with the Keshig because it is a range class unit. Interestingly though, even though the Keshig is a range class unit, it can capture enemy cavalry units. And that's Genghis Khan of Mongolia. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. I think they're insane. They can easily get more diplomatic visibility over their next target and dominate them with swift range and frontline cavalry units. The ability to creatively move civilian and support units across the map could lead to quick settles, fast religious victories, and more. I feel like there's some untapped potential there. If you got something out of this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. As always, take care, happy sibbing, and I'll see you next time.